Um, it, to me, it seems conflict is much more likely now because this is the, out of the same playbook he used in 2014. So uh, separatists, quote unquote, often w- with Russian forces embedded with them, they will launch some, some attack or, or pr- provocation against Ukrainian, the Ukrainian army. Um, the Ukrainian army even fires a single shot back. Putin will use that as a pretext to invade because he will say, look, Russians are being attacked. I mean, the Russian foreign ministry is even, I think it was the foreign ministry or the Kremlin itself has used the word genocide to describe what's going mm. on in eastern Ukraine, which is, which is ridiculously inflammatory language. But, but that's the kind of language he used in 2014 to justify the invasion of Crimea. Yeah, and there is a risk, of course, that, you know, now there's a sort of a realignment of the geopolitical axis. And even though a conflict in Ukraine between Russia and Ukraine, one might imagine, could stay isolated, there's a risk that it could draw in other powers. And, and we know, for instance, there's been allegations that the cyber attacks that took place against Ukraine recently could have been conducted by China and that President Macron has been talking to China as well. We know it's been on the subject of Ukraine. We don't know all the detail of that. But there does seem to be a more conciliatory approach from, say, members of the European Union when it comes to China and Russia than America and the UK. Uh, but, but the difficulty is, of course, if Putin does go into Ukraine, yes, we can apply sanctions. He controls the gas supply to Europe. And we're not going to send in troops to active combat, are we? No, I, and I think, I, mean, I think we only rely on about 10% of our energy supplies from Russian gas. It's still significant, but it's, I, I don't think we'd suffer as badly as some European countries. Um, but it is, I mean, if, if, if Russia does, does decide to invade, it's going to affect the, the economies of, of Europe, all of Europe. Like, our economy will be affected by that. So, I mean, this is something that, and it doesn't feel like there's much we can do about it. And China and Russia, I mean, they're constantly prodding the West to see how far it will respond. We see that in, in Hong Kong. We see that um, in Taiwan with, with China. And we also see that with Russia in Ukraine. And it feels like at the moment, with, with the retreat from Afghanistan recently, the American and, and British forces, um, with the non-intervention in Syria over, over recent years, it feels like there's kind of, the, the West is retreating to some extent. There's no appetite anymore since Iraq for any kind of foreign entanglement. Um, and for China and Russia, they are advancing into those spaces left behind as the West retreats. Yeah, and we've seen as well joint military exercises and quite big ones in recent times between Iran, Russia and China, which certainly sends a shiver down my spine.